Alright, welcome to lecture five. Okay, this time we're going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, looking at a lot of math. And when I say a little magic, I mean not very much magic at all. Starting with nuclear stability, and only talking about nuclear stability. Basically, I think this is voodoo. No, I don't actually think it's voodoo. I think it's very complex, you know, particle physics that uh, rules over this region of, uh, you know, science. And we are definitely not going to go into it. The reason I call it magic is they talk about magic numbers. Um, but what I want you to take away from this is that neutrons are nuclear glue. They uh, hold the nucleus together. And the heavier the nucleus, the more neutrons you need to keep everything from exploding. So if you look at the periodic table here, You'll see, well, let's just look at boron. Boron has an atomic number of 5. And down here, it has an average atomic mass of about 11. So, it can get by with just 5 protons. Many of them are happier with uh, 6 neutrons. Did I say neutrons? 5 neutrons versus 6 neutrons. That's, those are the two isotopes of boron. And it's mostly 6 neutrons. You can see because it's closer to 11. Then you pop down here to gold. Gold has 79 protons, but it has an atomic mass of about 197, meaning it has about 118 neutrons. So the heavier things get, the more pro or neutrons they need to hold the thing together just to keep it from exploding. So that's what you need to take away from. Uh, uh, nuclear stability. Now, uh, average atomic mass, you've already heard me mention that, talking about boron and gold. Um, the numbers underneath the elements here, these are the average atomic mass. This is the weight, or the mass, I should say, of each isotope, um, weighted by taking into account the abundance of that isotope. Okay, you know, you come over here to hydrogen, for example. Uh, most of the hydrogen in the universe is protium. You know, hydrogen one, you know, no neutrons whatsoever. And that's why the average mass is so close to one. Okay, a very small fraction is deuterium, proton, uh, uh, a proton and a neutron. You know, so that would have a mass of two, but it doesn't contribute very much. So it doesn't bring the atomic mass up all that much. Um, then an even smaller, like incredibly small, has, is tritium, one proton and two neutrons. So it doesn't contribute very much at all. Like I said, for boron, you know, some of it is boron-10, some of it is boron-11, and actually, more of it is boron-11. But uh, boron-10 still makes a contribution, which is why it's 10.8. Come over here to carbon. Far more carbon is carbon-12 than carbon-14. That's why it's so close to 12. Similarly, nitrogen is mostly nitrogen-14, and oxygen is mostly oxygen 16. Fluorine is mostly ox or fluorine 19. Okay. So, I mean, you can tell how many neutrons the average, or the typical, the most common uh, isotope has. You know, carbon is mostly carbon with six protons and six neutrons. Nitrogen is mostly the isotope with seven neutrons. Oxygen is mostly the isotope with eight neutrons. And fluorine is mostly the isotope with 10 neutrons. It gets harder when you go lower because they can have far more isotopes. Okay? But for these guys, it's usually fairly easy because they only have one or two isotopes. Well, definitely not one, but only two. Very rarely do they have a third. So... Um, it's not just an average, okay? The average of 12 and 14 would be 13, but the uh, atomic mass that is shown on the periodic table is about 12. It's a weighted average, okay? And a weighted average works like this. So, say you have uh, five apples um, weighing, I don't know, 20, 21, 21, 22, and 24 grams. You get the average by adding all of these together and then dividing by 5. Okay. 
So this would be the average mass of those five apples. Now, what if instead of five apples, you had a million apples? It would be a little bit more difficult to add the individual numbers together. So what you would want is just the relative amount of each mass. Okay, so 21, And what you do there is you multiply the mass times the percentage. Okay. But you have to remember that a percentage is actually a number between 0 and 1, even though we write it as 0 to 100. Okay. It's actually a fraction. Okay. So 10% means 10 you know, over 100. So it's actually one tenth or point one, point two. So twenty times point one is actually two. Uh, Hope you don't mind that I'm doing this multiplication quick in my head. But then you multiply them each by their percentage and then you add them all together. 4.4, uh, 10.4, That seems wrong. I definitely made a mistake somewhere. Let me grab my calculator really quick and find out. Okay, my multiplication was right. Must be my addition that's off. Yep, I lost something somewhere. Okay, so it's actually 22.7. That's much better. All right, so this, the 22.7, is the average weight. Okay. So just to recap that in a slightly more clear form, Okay, what you do is, you know, you'll have your numbers, you'll have your percentage, then number times percentage, and then you take the sum of all of those. Remember to, you know, divide by 100 here. <laughs> okay. So let me go ahead and give you an example using the actual elements. Let's look at boron. There's boron 10 and boron 11. I'm going to go ahead and make up some percentages here. Let's go ahead and say that boron 10 is 80% of all of them, of all the boron out there, and boron 11 is only 20%. So 10, uh, you go ahead and just assume that the atomic mass here is the actual mass, okay? Don't go with protons are, what is it, uh, 1.0079 and neutrons are 1.0083. You could do that if you wanted to be like really anal about it, but you, you don't really bother. So 10 times 0.8 is 8. 11 times 0.2 equals 2.2. Add those together, you get 10.2. So that's why I was saying earlier that most of the boron out there is actually boron 11. Because whichever one there's more of, the 
average mass is going to be closer to that one. You see, 10.2 is closer to 10 than it is to 11. Okay. So the actual abundance of boron is probably something like this, you know, the exact opposite of what I said. So 10 times 0.2 equals 2. 11 times 0.8 equals 8.8, .8, giving you an average of 10.8. Now, you can also do this exact same sort of math with heavier things or with more than two things, just like I showed you with the, uh, 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 the apples. So let's pretend that iodine, I'm making up most of these numbers, by the way. Uh, iodine, I know it has an average mass of about 127, so let's go ahead and say 126, 127, and 128. Uh, most of the isotopes actually will be grouped fairly closely like this. You know, they, they, you won't have any wild, you know, differences like iodine 139 or anything like that. You know, that just, no, 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 I'll be fairly close. So let's say um, 10, 50, and 40. Again, I don't know the actual abundances of the isotopes of iodine. So uh, 126 times 10% is going to be 12.6. Uh, uh, 127 times 50% is going to be 63.5. And 128 times 40% One point two. <laughs> All right, eleven. Let's do it. Giving us an average of one twenty seven point three. All right, does that answer make sense? Well, most of the iodine in this made up example is the one twenty seven, so it should be close to one twenty seven. Um, then some of that is above it, and some of that is below in terms of mass. Um, there's more 128 than there is 126, so you should expect it to be heavier than 127. Okay? If there was more 126 than 128, it would be lighter than 127. All right. So 127.3 is a reasonable answer. Looks like I didn't make any mistakes in my math. Now here is where things can get tricky, because you can turn this problem sideways. So for example, chlorine only comes in two isotopes, chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. Chlorine has an average atomic mass of 35.45. What are the relative abundances of the masses of chlorine? It's two isotopes, okay? So call this X percent and call this Y percent. What are X and Y? Now, this problem isn't as you know, impossible to solve as you might think. Okay? Because, like I said, there are only two uh, percentages, or only two isotopes. Okay? And that means... that if this one is x up here, this one down here is 100 minus x, because the two of them together have to add up to 100%. Uh, percent. Okay. So that means that there's really only one variable there. So 35x plus 37 times 100 minus x. Well, remember, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this problem. I know we're hitting uh, 15 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this problem and then we'll stop. All right, equals 35.45, okay. so. This is just the same sort of math I was doing. You know, the mass times the percentage plus mass times percentage is going to get you the average for the total. 
So all we're going to do is we're going to do some very basic algebra now. So 35x plus, now we're going to go ahead and multiply these through, plus 37 minus 37x equals 35.45. Now we have two terms with x in them, so we can just bring those together and you get 37 minus 2x equals 35.45. So let me go ahead and clear off my uh, chalkboard here. Rewrite that last one, 37 minus 2x equals 35.45. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and subtract 40, or uh, sorry, 37 from both sides. Negative 2x equals negative 1.55. Now we divide both sides by negative 2 x equals 0 0.775. Now, what was x? Well, we had chlorine 35, chlorine 37, x percent, 100 minus x percent. Okay, so this tells us the abundance of chlorine 35. And remember, to turn this back into a percentage, you multiply by 100. So chlorine 35 makes up 77.5% of all the chlorine out there. And the chlorine 37, well, it's just 100 minus this. So 5, 2, uh, 2, yes, 22.5%. So those are the different sorts of problems you could see. Um, well, not all of them. It's, in, it's a sampling of some of the sorts of problems you can see. Uh, it's, it's always possible to come up with new sorts of problems. All right, so that does it for uh, average atomic mass and relative abundance. Uh, and that does it for Lecture 5. I'll see you again in Lecture 6.